And it's just me on here. The volume's on though. But... Good morning. It's now streaming live on Facebook too. So. Mm -hmm. There, that, that's it right there. The little zoom zoom thing. Mm -hmm. Do you want to try to look at it without you in there? No. Okay. Let me see. Can you see like? Oh, huh? okay, yeah, that's fine. You can see the picture. It's just me. Yeah. And I don't know why, but I usually am pretty low in the picture. Sometimes they complain. Yeah, it's well, like well, that's because of the way you have the screen tilted. Yeah, yeah. The camera is up on top. But I mean, I, I usually do it like this. And so sometimes when it's sometimes when it's like this, they'll usually complain and they'll say, well, can you put it a little bit up? And I say, OK. Is and it'll be. Downstairs, see if I can find them. Okay. No, they're under. No, they're not. I'm Excuse me. Why? They're both. Hello.
test one, two, three. Good morning. Good morning. 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 Woohoo! Isn't it good to be back? Listen, uh, next week, Laura's not in here. Uh, I think we're probably pretty safe. Well, we got enough people. It's working out right. But we'll print some more bulletins. We're printing some now for those who did not get them. Raise your hand if you do not have a bulletin. Poor Molly. Is that rich? I can't tell. So a couple announcements. Several of you. Hi, Nimi. Hi, David. Have made suggestions on how to improve our communion distribution. And I appreciate the advice. But trust me, we worked through all the scenarios and we came up with this process, which is you'll come up, you'll take the bread from a priest, and as you walk to one side or the other, pick up an empty glass. The reason the glasses are not filled already is a what? You might spill them on your way back. You cannot take your mask down in front of the clergy to eat your bread, so you're going to be holding your bread. You might have a cane, and you sort of carry the glass like this with it full. It just doesn't work. Plus, we're wanting to display a little unity here, which is a different thing, and I'm going to be preaching about different things. We want you to take your bread back to the pew with your empty chalice, and then I'll raise the bread, or Laura will raise the bread and say, the body of Christ, which is given for you, take and eat it. Take and eat it then. When the wine is ready, we will come around probably down the center aisles and the back side aisles, place your empty chalice above the bowl, not in the bowl, because then the worship leader can really fill you up. Ted Gilbert, I know we're going to have to get two for you. Where is that guy? He didn't get enough last week, so I, I just want you to fill that thing up, okay? Hold on to your chalice. Laura will lift up our common cup. And this is, this is just our way of doing something different in Lent. We always do, right? But it's a sense of unity. We all drink it at the same time. The common cup represents that we drink it out of the common cup, which we can't do right now. The blood of Christ, which is given for you, shed for you. Take and drink this in remembrance that Christ died for you. You drink your wine. And then um, the worship leaders will come around. Please don't throw your glass in there. Place your chalice in there. It's very thick glass, so it won't break, and it's easy to wash that way. And although, as Gary Hernandez said, it will break, I remember when I was five years old, my, my dad bought me these new glasses because I'm blind without them. And he said, you could throw 50 footballs against them and they wouldn't break. So I threw them down on the concrete to test his theory. He tested me after that. At any rate, place the chalice in the bowl, please. Uh, we are now needing a coffee hose, refreshment host. Uh, we will have someone go get uh, from Sam's, bring individually wrapped items that can be served, but we need you here to sign up to do coffee, and you have to serve it. When you get your cup of coffee, let the host serve you. We're following diocesan guidelines here. If you want cream and sugar, use one spoon, do it, and then put the spoon in a basket. So you're the only one touching the spoon. Any questions? We have an exciting, exciting, that's the wrong word. We have a special holy event on Good Friday in the evening. I'm hoping, Bob, are you going to do Stations of the Cross at noon on Good Friday, or have you decided? Haven't decided. Okay, but at 6 o'clock Good Friday, we're going to do the seven last words of Jesus from the cross. And I have a non-denominational minister, a Roman Catholic minister, 
Father Thomas, he's going to write up something for us. We have Lynn from uh, Shepherd of the Valley Presbyterian coming. We have um, Joanne Neal from the Lutheran Church. And of course, you got Laura and me, and possibly Temple. So it's going to be, we're, we'll do a reflection, music, reflection, music, seven last words. It's a very powerful experience and ecumenical. So invite your friends. We will have these pews every other pew by then. And on Easter, they will be every other pew. And on Easter, we're having two services so everybody can come, 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock. Start contacting the office now which service you want to come to. Sleep late, come at 11. Be done with it, come at 9. I love being back in here. Are there any other announcements? Then let's get into a holy and reverent mood as uh, Beverly plays our prelude.
Please stand as you're able. Grace and peace to you from God. I just want to remind you that we're using prayers from the New Zealand Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may worthily praise your name through our Savior, Jesus. Amen. You'll notice the, the uh, grammar's a little different and the words are a little different, so you've got to pay attention. Um, one of the things we discovered in, in doing this online is the beauty of alternating voices in the song of praise and the creed. So I'm inviting the women to uh, do the first paragraph, the men the second, and the clergy the third. So women, if you, I had the women start because you all do such a better job and you set a good example for the men. <laughs> so women, please begin. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Hear the teaching of Christ. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment, and the second is like unto it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Hear the teaching of Christ. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. God has promised forgiveness to all who truly repent, turn to Christ in faith, and are themselves forgiving. In silence we call to mind our sins. Let us confess our sins. Together, merciful God, we have sinned in what we have thought and said, in the wrong we have done, in the good we have not done. We have sinned in ignorance. We have sinned in weakness. We have sinned through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry. We repent and turn to you. Forgive us for our Savior Christ's sake and renew our lives to the glory of your name. Amen. Through the cross of Christ, God have mercy on you, pardon you, and set you free. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. God strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Give us grace and courage to hope and to risk disappointment. Teach us to pray expectantly. And when our prayers seem to fail, bring us to pray again and again. For you are our God, who acts and will act again. Hear this prayer for your love's sake. Amen. I invite you to be seated for the reading. A reading from Exodus. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath 
or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my, com my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work, but on the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son or daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien residents in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but he rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. The psalm for this morning is Psalm 19, verses 1 through 14. If the congregation will please respond at the half verse. The heavens declare the glory of God. One day tells its tale to another. Although they have no words or language, their sound has gone out into all lands. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. The groom out of his chamber, it rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure <laughs> and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold. Sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened. Keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O, o Lord, Lord, my, my strength, strength and, and my redeemer. redeemer. The epistle reading is from 1 Corinthians. 
The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church.
Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and redeemer. Amen. What did you say? Am I reading the gospel? I may have you. This is just a test to see if you remember what happens in church. Because I have totally forgotten. I am anxious to preach. You can quit laughing so loud, Sue. Please stand as you're able. <laughs> the Holy Gospel according to John. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here, stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But Jesus was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. This is the gospel of Christ. Christ and now, let the words of my mouth continue to be a good thing, and the meditations of our hearts continue to be a good thing. Amen. Please be seated. Now, I noticed we had some children in here, and so now I have to do a children's sermon, but children, you can't come forward because I'm not wearing my mask. But I remember growing up, and I, I know children today, Leah, that your room is impeccable, that your room is straight and clean all the time, Leah. Is, do I hear an Amen. Well, Bob, I know your room is clean. Do you know that if Leah's room is clean? I don't think so. Well, occasionally, from time to time, every now and then, my brothers and sister and I would leave our clothes laying around not just our room, but the house. Now, I know none of you children have ever done that, but I remember my father walking through the house. If these kids would just pick up their clothes, I am so sick and tired of them just dropping everything where they stand. Now, I wonder what was really going on there with my dad. I, I'll have to say, I'll have to confess that I have gone around the house kicking my children's clothes and saying the same thing. Maybe an expletive here or there. Why bother cleaning our house? Why bother picking up our clothes other than it's a great discipline? It is a great discipline. But what's important is to enjoy the space that we all share. Enjoy the space we all share. This home that creates a family. This church that creates a family. So this 
sermon today is about priorities. And the priority is to enjoy living together in harmony as far as keeping a house straight. Today's gospel is the story of the cleansing of the temple. It's one of the few stories in the four gospels that's in each and every of the gospels. In the synoptic gospels, it happens on Jesus' last visit to Jerusalem before he was arrested and crucified. And at his trial, uh, he said, people accuse him, hey, he said he destroyed this temple and in three days ra raise it up again. In the gospel of John... Though, this is Jesus' first visit to Jerusalem in the gospel. He's just turned water into wine, exuberant abundance of joy and love at a wedding in Cana. And that's the first sign. The first half of the gospel of John is called the book of signs. And so for John, when he shares the story, as he says at the end of this gospel, I could have shared many stories, but I shared these stories so that you might believe and have eternal life. Believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God, as the Messiah. So we ask the question, why did he put the story as the second big event? And he says in that story it was a sign. I think it's a sign of Jesus is turning everything upside down and inside out. It's a whole new ball game. The, the concept of worshiping at the temple. The temple was a wonderful thing. People came from all over. And it was about fellowship. It was about feasting. It was about remembering God. And they were not allowed to bring Gentile coins in, so there were money changers there. And People didn't want to bring their animals from Timbuktu and so they could buy animals to sacrifice. It was a positive thing. It doesn't say that in this case, in the synopsis, it says den of thieves, but here it says a marketplace. And when I hear marketplace, I can't think of, you know, I think of church shopping. I think of people are looking for what they need and what they want. But Jesus is turning everything upside down. And he's replacing the place of worship with his own body. We don't need a temple. We don't need a building as great as it is to be back together here. What's important is we're together and we're here. Whether we're here inside this building or outside or somewhere else, it's the church is the people. I hope we can agree on that. And sometimes what happens is sideshows develop around the people of God gathered to worship God. And sometimes we tend to get distracted by the sideshows. The sideshows may have been the, the, the fellowship and the feasting and forgetting about God. Our primary purpose here is to get to know God better, pray, to be blessed, to be forgiven, and to share Jesus Christ with one another and in the bread and the wine. Things have been topsy-turvy lately. Have you noticed we've done things differently over the last year? It's almost as if Jesus came in and just flipped everything upside down. My gosh, we're taking communion like the Protestants. We're passing these empty chalices around and you're going to take it in your pews. Oh my gosh, it's like the mega churches. What have we come to? I, I think we should just quit church. Oh, wait a minute. That's not the most important thing about being church. Drinking from the common cup is a gift, but it's not the main show. It's finding Jesus. It's growing in the Spirit. Jesus says they will worship in spirit, 
not in the temple. So I began to wonder, what, what would be Jesus' response to coming into this temple? Would there be anything that he would be offended by or want to turn upside down? I promise you this. If we passed plastic shot glasses around and tiny little pieces of saltines, Jesus would flip those right upside down, and I know I would. But other than that, other than that, what would Jesus suggest? How would we turn this upside down? I don't know the answer to the question, but I know the church struggled with this in the 1800s. And William Reed Huntington, one of my heroes, brought up what we could now call the Chicago Lambeth Quadrilateral, which you can find in the back of your prayer book sometime when you're bored. Don't turn there now. Well, you don't have prayer books anyway. Oh my gosh! Huh. There's no Book of Common Prayer in the pews! How can we worship without the Book of Common Prayer? Elaine! How can we worship without the Book of Common Prayer in the pew? We're using bulletins instead of the Book of Common Prayer. Wait a minute. The words of the Book of Common Prayer are the words. They don't have to be in a book. They could be in our hearts. They could be in a bulletin. That's not the main show. But... When we changed the prayer book in 1928, I mean in 1979, those who were in love with the 1928 prayer book, some of them left the church because they thought that was the main show. And it is certainly an essential, beautiful part of our tradition. And just for those of you that love the 28 prayer book, I still do. I believe it's in our spiritual attic and parts of it will come back. It's not the main show. Jesus is the main show. Now where was I? I got distracted by the prayer book. The Chicago Lambeth Quadrilateral. William Reed Huntington. And, it, and this was a time, this was a time when Joseph Smith saw all the divisions and he discovered these golden plates that sort of brought all that, resolved all the questions and answers. So what, what I like about what he said was, and it was called the Four Square Church concept, believe it or not, and I know there's a church out there called Four Square that has nothing to do with this, for the concept of unity, for the sake of bringing other denominations together, Presbyterians, Lutherans, Baptists, um, we will hold these four things as essentials. Creeds, the Nicene Creed and the Baptismal Creed, which is the Apostles' Creed. Scriptures, as the Word of God. And the primary sacraments of our Lord, Baptism and Communion. And the historic Episcopate. And one thing I'd just like to remind you about the historic episcopate is it, it reminds us that Jesus was a historical person that walked this earth. And when, when you see our bishop, you are reminded that God walked here. Hands were laid on Peter that were laid on others, others until we get to Paul Gordon. So it's a representative, representation of the incarnation. Here's what he says. The Episcopal Church is ready in a spirit of love and humility to forego all preferences of her own concerning things of human ordering or choice regarding <gasps> modes of worship, OMG, discipline, and traditional custom. Joyce, are you getting ready to walk out of church now? Oh, you're just doing the camera. Okay, I, 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 I'm ready. People might be ready to leave. We are willing to be unified with other denominations as long as they also adhere to those four things and we're flexible in everything else. I don't think so. Hmm. 
All right, let's see how many people walk out with this one. Well, first of all, let's just do the plastic shot cups. Anybody going to walk out on that? I am. What about screens? <laughs> the abomination of abominations. What if we had screens up here like those mega churches? All right, come on, be honest. Who's going to walk out? That's what I thought. That's what I thought. The sideshow. Grape juice. What if we use grape juice instead of wine? <laughs> Hi, I'm Nancy, and I'm gone. Oh, let's see, I had some other things here. What if we give up our historic and beautiful rituals? I think a lot of us would leave. What if we give up one of the... I ask people, uh, Episcopalians, what they like about being Episcopalian. I can't tell me how many say, come to the altar and receive communion. What a great symbol of our unity. What a great symbol of our unity to drink from the common cup. But one thing I've learned during this COVID thing is there are some barriers that we set up to people in coming in and understanding and embracing our worship. And one person said, he's been worshiping with us online for a year, loving it, loving it. But he said, I'll never come worship with you because I won't drink out of the common cup. That was not even on my radar as something that blocks people from coming here. So even when we return to the altar, we will still offer individual cups of wine for anybody who wants it. It's, a, it's the sideshow of what we do, but it's Jesus. Grape juice, I've talked to the bishop about that one, but are we going, if Jesus can turn water into wine and turn wine into his blood, he can turn grape juice into his blood. So maybe we also offer grape juice if the bishop allowed it. <laughs> okay, I don't know if that's <clears throat> it's time for you to shut up, Jim, or I can't handle that one. We are a church not just of both and. In this Protestant Roman Catholic divide, we, we say we walk the Via Media, and we say it's not either or, but it's both and. And I'm always saying it's many and. So in the spirit of unity, like the Chicago... Quadrath, uh, Chicago Lambeth Quadrilateral, we might consider letting go. Letting go of what we hold tightly to if it's not God. If it's not Jesus. If it's not the Holy Spirit. If it doesn't lead us closer to God our primary purpose for being here in church is to get closer to God, to be blessed by God. Our other primary purpose is to invite, welcome, and connect other people to God. And we have to look at what barriers there might be. We don't want to be a stumbling block for someone finding the beauty of what we have here. We... We aren't going to give up our traditions. We don't have to. Those traditions bring us to God. But if there is a sideshow, we have a problem. And Jesus is saying, this way we've been doing it all the time, worshiping at the temple, is over. We worship in spirit. I invite all of us, uh, I'm in a clergy group, that, uh, a rector's group, and one of the rectors brought up this concept over the last year. There's a lot of things we had to let go of, and it was sort of, what must we let die in order, as Bishop Chandler said, to thrive? But I'm not worried about this. I think it's more personal than that each of us might want to ask ourselves, what inside of us must die 
to come to know God in a more close, uh, more intimate way. What is blocking us from God, blocking us from God? Because that's the number one priority, is our spiritual growth. We're in the business of dying and rising. So it's an appropriate spiritual task that we're in. I invite you for these last few Sundays of Lent to consider that. Let me see what I left out. I think we're good. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Turn to the affirmation of faith. And women, if you'll take the first paragraph, men the second. And a court, will you turn Laura's uh, microphone on so her voice is well heard over my voice when it comes time for clergy? Women, please stand as you're able. If the women will begin. to be your gospel in the world. You reconcile and heal. You overcome death. You are our God. We worship you. You can find the prayers of the people in your bulletin. Okay. God of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ, you promised to hear us when we pray to you in faith with thanksgiving. We pray for one another, for our families and friends, through whom we learn to love and be loved. Thank you for all who care for us. Give us grace to serve Christ by serving our neighbors and our community, loving others as he loves us. God of grace. God of grace, hear our prayer. We remember with gratitude your many gifts to us in creation and the rich heritage of these islands. That's Help us and people everywhere to share with justice and peace the resources of the earth. Give wisdom to those in authority among us and to all leaders of the nations. We remember with thanksgiving all who have died in Christ, and we rejoice at the faithful witness of your saints in every age, praying that we may enter with them into the unending joy of your heavenly kingdom. I invite you now, as you feel led, to utter any of your own personal prayers out loud or in your heart. And whoever might be monitoring Facebook, if you want to share their prayers and any prayers on Zoom. 
Merciful God, you look with compassion on all who turn to you. Hear the prayers of your people. Uh, We're waiting on prayers. If there are any. And I see I did it out of order. Once again, Laura is correct. (laughs) But I still ask you to utter your prayers out loud now or on Zoom or in Facebook Live. Wendy and I are really appreciative and uplift everyone that said prayers for us this past week. Together. Grant that what we have asked in faith we may may by your your grace grace receive receive. through Jesus Christ Christ, our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. God of mercy, you have given us grace to pray with one heart and one voice and have promised to hear the prayers of two or three who agree in your name. Fulfill now, we pray, the prayers and longings of your people as may be best for us and for your kingdom. Grant us in this world to know your truth and in the world to come to see your glory. This time, uh, you can turn to page 830 uh, for birthday prayers. Are there any birthdays? Isabel, are you coming forward because it's your birthday? Great. So why don't you stand right there so we keep our social distance. Are there any other birthdays? Let us pray. Watch over your child, O Lord, as her days increase. Bless and guide her wherever she may be. Strengthen her when she stands. Comfort her when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise her up if she falls. And in her heart may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. Do you want to tell us how old you are? 17. Congratulations. You're almost an adult. Now, speaking of adults, do we have any uh, wedding anniversaries to celebrate? Next week, we'll have those in the insert. Then I think we're ready for the Eucharist. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Feel free to greet one another from a distance. Peace, peace, peace. Um, In the lectors, in their... you again of how we're taking communion and uh, there is an offering plate here if you want to leave your credit cards there feel free are there any other announcements I've left out yes yes if you'll turn your bulletins back in leave them at a table as you leave either place please recycle the inserts, the, uh, the readings, because they'll change every week. Ascribe unto the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts.
in your bulletin to page seven. Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time, you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being, sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways, but we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer you these gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with Perpetua and all her saints and all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ, with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. The gifts of God for the people of God. They're coming up to get up. Bread. The body of the 
our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for you, preserve your body and souls unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Christ, which was shed for you. Preserve your body and souls unto everlasting life. Take and drink this in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen.
And now please stand as you are able and join me on page nine of your bulletin in the prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty God, Therefore, ever living God, keep us steadfast in your holy fellowship. And now we offer ourselves all that we have and are to serve you faithfully in the world through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The blessing, mercy, and grace of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. He plays our wonderful new organ. I just want to let you know that last week, everything was taken apart, cleaned, repaired. The vestry had authorized to have that done. And so now we have our new, the cleansing, the cleansing of the organ took place last week. And now we have something new to hear. It better be good. Have courage, hold on to what is good, return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the suffering, honor everyone. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Before we go into the fellowship hall for coffee and snacks, Remind you, please speak to me if you're willing to uh, be the coffee host. And as you leave, take a chance to look at where the chimes were placed. They used to be back in there, so now they're more, uh, you can hear them better. And what's this called, Beverly? Dipple Stern. Dipple Stern? 
Yeah, whatever it is, uh, it's, a, it's a complicated Episcopal terminology there, and it sounds beautiful. So let's go have coffee, play something. <laughs>